The opening hymn is found in the Catholic Books of Worship. It is number 357. Be with me, Lord. Number 357. We sing the first two verses. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I pray. You who dwell in the shelter of the Lord Most High, who abide in the shadow of our God, Say to the Lord, my refuge and fortress, the Lord in whom I trust. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I pray. No evil shall befall you, no pain come near, for his angels stand close by your side, guarding you always and bearing you gently, watching over your life. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I pray. Good morning, dear fellow parishioners. In this time of distress and trial, we pray together here at the church, the Holy Mass, you in your home, spiritually linked to the Mass in the parish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. When the sons of Jesse came, Samuel looked on Eliab and thought, 
Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as the human sees. The human looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. Jesse sent and brought David in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it is said, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, please be in my mind and in my heart, that I may worthily proclaim your gospel in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. 
Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man lying from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then the man who was blind went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But other, the others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. They did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, who had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him 
and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. The other day, one of our fellow parishioners, who's a real sports fan, was talking with me and telling me what distress he's feeling with no sports. Especially at this time of the year, it's time for March Madness. He loves March Madness. I could totally sympathize with him that not only March Madness has been swept away, but the Masters, the Kentucky Derby, the NHL countdown to the playoffs, the NBA playoffs, even the beginning of the baseball season, all might be swept away. I think that the talking heads on all our sports channels, you know, would want to make a shrine, build a shrine to Tom Brady this past week because he actually gave them a couple of days of something to talk about and saved them from a fate that is perhaps worse than death for our talking heads, and that is the fate of having nothing to talk about, the fate of having nothing to say. Do we have anything to say in this time of trial? Today's gospel gives us something to say. This ancient and uh, inspired story of the healing of the man born blind in the gospel of John which is always read on the fourth Sunday of Lent, gives us something to say. I'd like to read a summary of that story and its meaning in the Gospel of John from the Ignatius Bible. So it's a commentary on this story. It draws our attention to the fact that in the Gospel of John, whenever there's a miracle, such as this healing of the sight, that that miracle is a sign. In other words, it's an open window to deeper meaning, to a deeper understanding of faith. And here's that deeper understanding, according to the Ignatius commentary. Giving physical sight to the blind is a sign that Jesus gives us spiritual sight to see earth in light of heaven, time in light of eternity, and our lives in light of our destiny. So we're meant to see things in a different way through that gospel passage. I do believe optometrists who deal with all kinds of all kinds of matters in the area of vision of the eyes, that optometrists will assure us that there are conditions where a person can only see 
the surface of things. There's no depth perception. This gospel today is all about telling us that there must be a spiritual depth perception. There could be a, a visual, visual malady in times to come of being able to see all the little details but not being able to see the big picture. Well, that's the spiritual malady that we're talking about in this passage. We're able to see all the surface things, all the trivial objects, and all the distractions, but we can't see the big picture. All of that in these times is being swept away. I'd like to read again then that commentary. Giving physical sight to the blind is a sign that Jesus gives us spiritual sight to see earth in the light of heaven, time in light of eternity, and our lives in light of our destiny. In this time of trial, that opportunity will be given to us through our suffering, I think, to be able to see more in depth, to be able to get beyond the superficiality of the way we've been seeing things so much in our society. Of seeing the big picture. What is the big meaning of life? What is our destiny? What is our true life, if not in heaven? What is our true hope, if not in our God? I'd like to share with you, dear parishioners, a prayer experience I've had in the last week that has given me a sense of this, this deeper insight that we might be given through our suffering. I was in my time of prayer feeling very much the kind of feeling we're in, that we're in a bad dream. I think we're all kind of experiencing that now. And at that prayer time, I saw a picture in my mind's eyes of Jesus sitting on a, a curb, the corner of a street, sitting on the curb. He looked very sad and weary, sitting on the curb with his knees drawn up and his elbows on his knees. I went to him in my prayer and I said, Jesus, what are you doing here? And he gave me a gesture, a weary gesture, but with a kind of a friendly look and said, sit down with me here on the side of the curb. Why don't you? There's plenty of room, he said. I sat down on the side of the curb and I asked him again, Jesus, what are you doing here? And he answered, I've been kicked to the curb. I said, Jesus, what do you mean you've been kicked to the curb? And he said, haven't you ever been kicked to the curb? Sure you have. Let me show you some times in your life when I know that you have. And so I sat there in my prayer time with Jesus in my imagination, sitting beside him on the curb. And he began to touch moments in my life when I had felt like I had been kicked to the curb. And I began to cry. Actually, I was weeping in my prayer time. It's not often that I cry anymore being a crusty old pastor, but I was weeping for a good length of time, and it was only after that when I felt again a little bit of calm. As I felt all the pain, you know, of being rejected, of feeling like I'd been kicked to the curb, I was able to sit down again at Jesus' side. And he said to me, you see what it means. You know what it feels like to be kicked to the curb. Now imagine me, said Jesus. I've been kicked to the curb again and again all the time. Try to imagine how I feel in my heart. At that point, I felt almost like I had been drawn a little closer to understanding my Lord and his heart. And I managed 
to very hesitatingly, almost stammering, ask him, Jesus, have I kicked you to the curb? Jesus looked at me sadly, and he said, let me just show you a little something. When Jesus shows me these things, I never feel accused or condemned, but I always do feel touched. And he began to show me how so often I am far more enthusiastic talking about sports, because I'm a real sports fan, talking about movies, talking about the gossip in the parish, or complaining about my government or complaining about my church. Far more enthusiastic about talking about those things than talking about my Lord, talking about Jesus. I could feel that, how sometimes almost wanting to make people feel like things are not, uh, trying to lighten up things, that I've never really gotten beyond the surface, keeping things superficial. When people really might be wanting to talk about something far closer to their hearts, talking about Jesus, and really talking with the enthusiasm and the care of knowing him. Have I kicked Jesus to the curb? Dear Lord, sorry, pardon me if I have done that. Please forgive me for keeping things superficial. And Jesus made a kind of a tired but a sweeping gesture saying all of that is being swept away. So I began to ask him other questions. And he responded with only two phrases. He responded with, I've been kicked to the curb, or this is being swept away. So I said to him, Jesus, many people are, are saying that if we just throw enough money at this problem of our pandemic, that we'll get through it. And he said, this is being swept away. And I knew what he meant. He meant that we need more than that if we're going to get through this pandemic. I said to him, Jesus, many people are saying that God is punishing us through this pandemic. And he said, sadly and slowly, all that is being swept away. In other words, that's a far too superficial way of understanding what we're going through. I said to him, Jesus, many are saying that all we need is more human ingenuity and more science, listening to our experts, and they will get us through this. And Jesus responded by saying, I've been kicked to the curb. I said to him, Jesus, many say that I am spiritual, but I'm not religious. I don't need to be part of a religion with all its demands and its dogmas. I just need to be spiritual. And I heard Jesus say, this is being swept away. This will be not enough, this attitude, to help us through this time. I said, Jesus, many say that Christianity is just one religion of many, and that it had really, even though Christianity made our Western civilization, that we don't have to acknowledge its roots. It's just one religion among others, and you're just one teacher among others. And Jesus said, all this is being swept away. I said, Jesus, we have strayed from our Christian roots. And that is why we are going through such distress. And he said, I have been kicked to the curb. I said, Jesus, we have left your protection. And therefore, the powers of darkness 
can harm us. And he said, I have been kicked to the curb. The man born blind was kicked to the curb, but there he found Jesus. And as he sat there on that curbside with Jesus, and they talked, he began, something wonderful began to happen. He began to see Jesus for who he really is, for who he really can be for you and me. He started by seeing that Jesus was a good man, and a healer. But there was more to come. As he stayed kicked on that curb after being harassed by the Pharisees, Jesus grew in his mind's eyes and he began to see that this man is a prophet. And yet there was still more to come. As he experienced the rejection of the Pharisees, Jesus grew in his mind's eyes till he saw him with his newfound sight, for who he truly is. Jesus is Son of Man. Jesus is the only Son of God. And here I am on the curbside talking with him. My dear fellow parishioners, I invite you to come and join me in my prayer experiences over the days, weeks, and months ahead. Let us go to the curb and sit with Jesus. It's very simple. Get into an attitude of prayer, perhaps while we, after having prayed the rosary. Just try to imagine Jesus sitting there on that curb. And come and sit beside him. Let him talk to you about your hurts, about the times when you have felt kicked to the curb. Let him draw you into a deeper appreciation for his own heart, that has been so rejected and so hurt and bruised. And even if it gets to that point, ask him the question, Jesus, have I kicked you to the curb? Keep returning to that curbside. And let Jesus grow greater in your mind's eyes, greater in your heart. Let Jesus bring you through these frightening times that we are living. I hope to see you at the curb. Brothers and sisters, let us support one another's faith by proclaiming the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And please remember we will pray our parish prayer at the end of the prayer of the faithful. Dear Heavenly Father, out of the depths of our suffering, we cry to you, hear our prayers. The response to the petitions is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our suffering world, that God give us hope, strength, and courage. We pray to the Lord. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that God keep him safe and in good health, we pray to the Lord. 
for our civil and religious leaders that their decisions be guided by the wisdom of God's Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the courageous doctors and nurses of the world, may God bless them and protect them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those suffering from the COVID-19 virus, that they may know the presence and peace of Jesus in their time of trial, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear For our parishioners, may God keep them safe, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear and finally, we pray for those who have died. May they know the mercy of God the Father, of Jesus, the Son and Savior of humankind, and the love of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Parish prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come by the means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse, upon the parishioners of Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, for he humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord our God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out and without end acclaim. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Dear fellow parishioners, we invite you to make a spiritual communion with us at the end of this Eucharistic prayer. Daniel will be reading a prayer for spiritual communion. Please try to make that prayer your own. You may find that prayer as well on our parish website. Eucharistic Prayer for Reconciliation, number two. You therefore, almighty God, you therefore, almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for your sake, for our sake, you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Douglas our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us bless one another with a sign of Christ's peace. Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death brought life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, dear Lord. 
Never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. the body of Christ. Amen. The body of glory. May God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. And fellow parishioners, we invite you to echo this prayer for spiritual communion in your hearts. O Jesus, I turn toward the holy tabernacle, where you live, hidden for love of me. I love you, O my God. I cannot receive you in holy communion. Come. Nevertheless, and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it, render it like unto your own. Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us continue to pray for one another. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. God. The closing hymn is found in the Catholic Books of Worship. It happens to be the same as the opening hymn, number 357. Let us sing verse 3 of Be With Me, Lord, number 357, starting with the verse. Number 357, Be With Me, Lord. Those who cling to the Lord will live secure in his love. Lift it high, those who trust in his name. Call on the Lord, he will never forsake you. He will bring you salvation and joy. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I pray. 